Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of the Suzanne Venker Show, where we tell truths the culture won't. You can find out more at SuzanneVenker.com. And of course, the Suzanne Venker Show would not exist without the good folks over at Hair Saloon for Men. Hair Saloon is a business that has as much to do with the restoration of men as it does with the business of haircutting. And twice a month, President and CEO of Hair Saloon, Tom Twellman, joins us to talk about his work and about some of the issues that we cover here on this program, which I know are as dear to him as they are to me. So welcome back, Tom. Thanks, Suzanne. Glad to be here. So what's new at Hair Saloon? Well, um, just cutting hair like we always do, but uh, we are seeing a little bit of a, a bump, I guess, with back to school coming on, so a lot of our young sons of our customers uh, trying to look good for their first day of school. So we, we see a little bit of a bump, but not, not much. And uh, so that's, that's been fun. And uh, we have a, uh, we're putting the final touches on, uh, on a saloon in, in the Houston, Texas market. And that'll be opening up uh, next month. So that's, uh, that's exciting. Excellent. And uh, we're, we've got those, uh, that franchisee owner in town this week, and we're doing some training and, getting them ready to, uh, to operate their own saloon. So, and, and just uh, in case, busy time. sounds great. And just in case our listeners aren't familiar, what can you speak a little bit to just what your sort of broader mission is beyond just just being in the business of haircutting so people kind of understand yeah, our connection like, here? Like, <laughs> yeah, like you said in the introduction, I mean, we, we consider ourselves to be more in the business of men as opposed to just being in the business of haircutting. So... <clears throat> When we started this concept, uh, you know, the men were sort of a forgotten uh, uh, customer, if you will. So we've we've designed a place that, uh, you know, certainly makes men feel comfortable walking in. I think they, uh, you know, enjoy the, the amenities that we provide, and it's it's been fun. And do you say, would you, are your clients mostly, I mean, I guess you see a lot of fathers and sons together, which is nice, yes? Yeah, Um our, our primary target is the adult male. Um, okay. we, we like to say from from age eight to eighty eight. You know, we don't <laughs> we don't care how old or how young. But uh, we have a lot of fathers and sons that come in. We have a special for them, so they they're attracted to that. But uh, I, I, about twenty percent, depending on the store, is is uh, eighteen and under. So got it. Uh, you know, we got a pretty good mix. Well, it must be nice because there aren't many um, male spaces left in America, are there? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so that's wonderful. Um, so we're going to be talking in this hour with Tina Marie Griffin, who's known as Countercultural Mom, and she, she's she's something. I mean, she's she used to work in Hollywood, and um, she uncovered basically a disconnect between um, what the Hollywood messages put out, or what Hollywood puts out as its messages, and right. the way that those people live secretly with their own families behind the scenes, which is basically not letting them watch the stuff that they create, and how horrible this is. And I was just wondering, as a father of eight, you must have some some feelings on this yourself. Oh, well, absolutely. I think uh, I, I read a little bio on her, and the fact that that the people that invent these games and and produce these movies and in the TV shows and, and so on, that they shelter their own kids. I think that's all you need to know. <laughs> I mean, if that's what's going on, I mean, if they, they know the damage that, that can be caused, you know, with the kids being exposed to this kind of stuff. So in my own family, uh, you know, I guess, you know, my, my youngest is, is 26. So um, I predate, I guess, a little bit of this crazy iPhone stuff and all that. So, you know, um, we, we did not allow, you know, video games in, in, in our house or playing on the TV or whatever. And, you know, we tried to shelter as much as we could. So, and, you know, as far as the movies and, I mean, in these days, I mean, it's everything's on prime time TV now. You know? Right. I mean, I, you, can't, you can't watch an ad without them trying to force feed some sort of lifestyle down your throat. And, and uh, well, and I, that's what, I, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was going to say, my wife and I look at that. We go, well, we can't shop there anymore, or we can't buy that car anymore because you know they're pushing something that's just you know a, a cultural trend instead of uh, you know uh, what I like to say it's 
trends versus truth. You know? Oh, so, that's great. Right. Oh, yeah. gosh, that's great. I got to use that, trends versus truth. Yeah. Well, that's what makes well, this, this gal, Tina I'm gonna, Griffin. I'm going tra- uh, to trademark that before you use it. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do it together. Um, <laughs> I don't know a lot about trademarking, um, but that's what this gal Tina Griffin is there for. I mean, she's literally helping parents keep that at bay, and she even has this app where she you can sign up. And of course, you're beyond this now with your kids, but your kids' kids. I mean, your your adult children, right. of course, are parents, so right. they might be interested to know that they can get this app. And she basically does all the work for you to tell you what obviously you don't want coming into your home, so that you can be aware of it. It's really great, really neat stuff. Oh, that's that's unbelievable. Yeah, I, I admire her work, and uh, hopefully she uh, stays strong and keeps up the good fight. Absolutely. Well, thanks for coming on, Tom, and. Um, you do the same in terms of keeping up the good fight, and we'll talk to yeah. you soon the next time you come in. Look forward to it. Great. All right. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Tom. If you're old enough to remember life in America in the 1960s or even 70s, you'll recall that the culture of entertainment was very different than it is today. You can actually watch TV with your kids without fear of being bombarded with messages and visual imagery most parents would deem inappropriate or harmful. In fact, Hollywood used to take its influence seriously. The producers of film and television were literally bound by contract to impart moral messages and to avoid subjects that were considered unethical. Sadly, those days are gone. In this hour, we'll talk with Tina Griffin, otherwise known as Counter Culture Mom, about the harmful effects of pop culture. Tina went from baling hay and milking cows on a dairy farm in Wisconsin to working as an actress in Hollywood. While there, she talked with countless celebrities about the huge chasm between the roles they played on television and their own family lifestyles, and realized this information must be revealed to the masses. To that end, Tina shares the inside scoop of how celebrities shelter their own children from any violent, sexual, or obscene entertainment, and how they preview media entering their homes. Tina's mission is to educate and equip parents and teens on how to safely navigate today's pop culture madness. Tina joins us now on the phone. Good afternoon, Tina. Hey, thank you so much. (laughs) Yes, good afternoon. Sorry, you might have a little pool splashing in the background, but when you constantly are doing um, a lot of FBI research on Beyonce, Jay-Z, Madonna, and and all the... uh, raunchy movies like good boys coming up here on august 16 i had to take a break so my kids are like mom enough research let's go to the pool so you can balance your life out oh my gosh you'll have to come back to that and tell me about that new one coming up i don't know about that one. Oh, i should just text you anytime i want to know about something pop culture yeah you, um, you totally could so you know there, a couple years ago i heard something that candace bergen said once in an interview and it really stuck with me because i completely agree and i don't think people really understand she said television is just so impactful we have no idea and we know and you know that actors know this and yet they happily sell messages that are harmful knowing full well they don't let their own kids watch it for that very reason and this is where you come in because this is why you do what you do right absolutely well i i was a I grew up a farm kid in Wisconsin, and at the age of 20, after giving my life to the Lord at 16, I'm like, Lord, use me big. I mean, I want to go to Hollywood, expose some lies, dig in deep, and try to really my passion for moving to L.A. at the age of 20 was to witness the celebrities because I grew up watching 90210 and Melrose Place and seeing criminal sex. Back then, it, it really it was bad. It gave the wrong messages, didn't show the consequences, no STDs, no one's dying of cervical cancer, and <laughs> those activities you know were promoted but today it's it's seriously 100 times worse so i want to go to la have an impact talk with celebs on set bring them to church some came with me to church and there was a lot of great things that happened in la and a lot of things i learned as a result to give me the passion and mission for what i'm doing today which is exposing the lies of pop culture helping parents safely navigate the mess let them know there's thousands of positive entertainment options but you hit the nail on the head with Hollywood hypocrisy that's going on where a lot of celebrities know what they're doing is wrong. But another side that I was, I re, I saw that was revealed to me at about the age of 23, 24, is I was working on Little Black Book, a movie with Brittany Murphy, the late Brittany Murphy. Amazing, talented actress, died, I think, at the age of 38, 39. That whole thing is a conspiracy on what happened to her and her husband. But when I met her on set right before she passed away, shooting Little Black Book, I believe it was back in 2003, 2004, she told me I'm a Christian 
I believe in what I'm doing is wrong, but I believe I have to do this. I'm forced to doing this in order to get ahead in the industry. If I don't do these roles, Tina, like Eminem, Marshall Mathers, where uh, she worked with him right before Little Black Book, it was Eight Mile. Drug scenes, sex scenes, all glamorized, and it irked her, it bothered her, and we talked about it for a while. She goes, if I don't do that movie role, I will never work in Hollywood again. She goes, I feel forced. I don't want to do this stuff. So you have the celebrities that know what they're doing is wrong, could care less. You have the celebrities that don't want to be doing it, but feel forced into it by their agents, managers, and producers. So it gave me a heart and passion to let celebrities know, hey, you don't have to do these kind of roles. God will bless you and give you great movies to work on. And look at the amazing movies that we have a selection of today. It's not oh. cheesy stuff from the 90s. Yeah, I want to. I got to go to a quick break right now. And when we come back, I want to talk about that very thing and ask you about sort of Christian slash conservative Hollywood and how that's kind of yes. made, a, made a resurgence. So um, we'll be right back. Are you unhappily single? Does your marriage or relationship feel hard? I get a lot of emails from readers who are struggling in their marriage or relationship. Unfortunately, the help an individual or couple needs can rarely be answered in a series of emails. For this reason, I offer relationship coaching for those who are struggling to find love and for couples whose marriage or relationship feels stuck in a negative cycle. Go to SuzanneBanker.com and sign up today for a coaching session with me and learn the tools you need to find love and sustain it. It's so much easier than you think. That's SuzanneBanker.com. Welcome back to The Suzanne Venker Show. You can find out more at SuzanneVenker.com. This program is brought to you by Hair Saloon for Men. At Hair Saloon, customers receive a complimentary hot or cold beverage as well as a shoe shine, hot towel, and mint. At Hair Saloon, they don't offer coupons because they don't need to. Their prices are always reasonable, and customers never feel shortchanged when they walk out the door. So head on over to HairSaloon.com. They have 18 locations in St. Louis, Pittsburgh, Boston, and Houston. Book online or through their mobile app. Again, that's HairSaloon.com. We're talking today with Tina Marie Griffin, also known as Counterculture Mom, about the harmful effects of pop culture and what Americans can do to fight back against the Hollywood machine. So we left off talking about how you got involved in Hollywood and tried to help people see that there are other options besides the basically, let's just call it filth because that's what it is, that Hollywood puts out. And it made me think of this sort of resurgence of Christian slash conservative Hollywood films and producers that I've um, been somewhat aware of more so than I ever have in the past. And I didn't know if you could speak to that. Yeah, well, you know what? I, I don't know of many. This is the sad part. You pointed out that back in the day, there was a lot more Christian influence in Hollywood and you're, you're dead on. That's exactly what happened. Um, years ago, decades ago, three, four decades ago, you had a lot more Christian producers and directors and just the state of our culture was honestly cleaner they cared right. for our kids and they put kid first before cash um and yet yes there was dirty stuff still happening behind the scenes people would constantly argue that yes but a lot more people that had that were decision makers where the cash goes what they produce what they make um family values that were upheld i mean leave it to be first you know shows that actually promoted positive messages and if there's something that was bad there was a consequence for it kids got to learn um a family a value from watching TV shows back then. A lot of Christians left the industry, and I think that's where we really should give ourselves a D minus F on leaving the very the most impactful part of our country, uh, really around the globe. I mean, I went to Africa, did mission trips. You had kids wearing Beyonce, Eminem, and um, Madonna T-shirts over in uh, the in, in the in the tribes of Africa, and they don't even have a TV set. So. Hollywood's influential. Christians should have never left. And I am actually telling people when I go on the street and, and preach and speak, I have a lot of parents that constantly come up to me. My kid wants to be an actress, become famous. I said, okay, hang on. The Going to Hollywood and becoming an actor, we need Hollywood um, uh, celebrities that are doing it for the Lord. Um, but we we want to make sure our kids are not going to become famous in the next big thing because they will, they will sell their soul as a result in the industry. So when I went out there, praise the Lord, and look back now, I could have easily fallen prey to rape and um uh sex scenes and drugs and alcohol but god kept me free from that not that i didn't have a couple different scenarios where i didn't know i got in and i ran out because there's a couple scenarios like that like a short little mini skirt and i was like there's no way i'm doing this for austin powers and they said you'll never work for us again um and so a couple, couple other movie scenes that i you know was going for didn't know they were that bad and then ran off the set when i got there but if your kids are interested in getting into the film and TV world or you are as an adult, we need Christians out there. Wear modest clothing. Take the positive roles. 
get involved with um, good films that have a great moral message. It doesn't have to be uh, a Bible verse every other sentence, but man, we need some good positive movies out there. But what I'm finding is not all the Christians are out there making those decisions. We, we find them all over the country today, all over the globe. The Irwin brothers, <clears throat> Andy and John Irwin, I interviewed John uh, for a show that I was doing two years ago. He's an amazing guy. Him and his brother have a film company. They just moved to Franklin, Tennessee, like two months ago, three months ago. And so these Christian film companies are cropping up all over. I just took an Israel trip with Kevin and Sam Sorbo. Kevin's been a Hercules in the Hercules mm -hmm. TV show series for years. Just did God's Not Dead and a bunch of others. These people are constantly looking for Christians that want to work on set, want to act alongside them and put a positive message out there. And they're on low budget films, but making box office hits. Yeah. What do you make of that? Like, does that include like that film Breakthrough? Was yes, that, Breakthrough was amazing. Yeah. I, I or that other pro-life John, one, too. Uh, John Smith, he was the guy who drowned and died. Uh, he was dead for over an hour and came back. Yeah. God brought him back to life. That's seriously what happened to him three years ago. I met him because I did a school assembly in Missouri, and I couldn't believe it. I showed the uh, assistant principal and some other staff what I planned on showing in the school assembly the next morning. They are like, do you know that John, because it was a breakthrough trailer I was playing, do you know John goes to our school? I'm like, no way. So movies like that that are shot on a low budget, it tells me when they are jam-packed to the theater, yeah. and I went to the theater, I saw that movie three or four times, different locations. Place was packed. Why? Because people want positive, but there's a lack of positive entertainment today. I wish Hollywood would uh, open their eyes that if they're after the cash, which they are, then produce the positive, uplifting, family-friendly flicks that people want to take their kids to see. I'm not going to go see... Some of the upcoming Disney movies and even Toy Story 4 we didn't see because there's a lesbian scene in it. So it's like, I wish they would just, and of course they're lost people, they don't know the Lord, so their whole mission is different than Christians. But man, if you want to create positive family uh, movies and have people that actually come, get the positive back in our culture today and you will see a rise of families that actually take their kids out to see a, a movie. Well, one of the things that you just, you mentioned in there when you were talking that that is such a that I feel so strongly about is is how you talk about it's how it's a breeding ground for lies and it sends these messages and then it and and it doesn't show the consequences so you, you these young people get a, a theme or an idea in their head but they don't see what happens after the fact so the, the the show or the film closes out with some happy ending but it doesn't show what happens in real life after that and sex in the city when you mention that is a pre, it's a great example like those women would have herpes and un, you know I, actually i never really watched it but i'm got the gist of it um but it's you're absorbing this without without seeing the real life version of it and to me that's the most um uh that's the part of hollywood that makes it corrupt in my opinion Absolutely. I'm giving you a high five here from Franklin right now because that's the number one problem. People are like, well, it's real life. You know, the drugs and the drinking and driving. I'm like, yes, it is. And you know what? If there's going to be a scene like that, because I played a druggie in some different uh, student films that I did when I was going to Cal State Los, Los Angeles. But I told them I will not play the druggie unless I die or go to yeah. AA and get counseling because I <gasps> want help, a hope and help being promoted in the <laughs> negative things that are going on in our culture today. Why add to it? Why add to the problems? We, as suicide is the number two killer for our kids today. Why? I highly believe it's because of the junk they're seeing in TV. They think it's hopeless. You have so many kids now committing suicide after binge watching 13 Reasons Why on, um, on um, Netflix. Yeah. And praise the Lord, a month ago, I just got an email from Parents Television Council that they decided to take that scene out of 13 Reasons Why, the producers, because... They finally saw all the links of all the kids committing suicide after watching that series. The bummer is it took them over a year and a half to do it. Mm. So so you're so right with the consequences not revealed. And I have an app, a counterculture mom app, because I know that there's probably people tuning in right now saying, well, what can we do? And it's, it's bombarding our kids. And I can't watch every minute of where they are, an iPad and phone and TV. So I created an app. And I'm building a lot to it yet, but there's a lot of great features on it. I'm building a team of people. We're raising partners who want to support the ministry. We just became a nonprofit. All that information is on our app, Counterculture Mom. If you download it for free, you get notifications that are coming from eight different counterculture moms that are pumping out critical information to help you as parents, grandparents, teachers, educators, pastors get the content ahead of time because we have to get the power and information back in the parents' hands first because right now it's Hollywood versus parents, and right now Hollywood is winning. If we're educated and we know what's going on, we'll know how to help our kids 
and how to educate our kids. Because I don't just send an alert once a week. I'm telling parents this is coming out, but here's how you talk to kids about it. And guess what? Here are three positive options of what you can get your kids involved with that will help them thrive, not just survive, but thrive in today's culture and become uh, world changers. That's oh, what we want. That is such a big deal. That would that would have been so huge. My kids are, I have one off in college now and one who's driving. And so I, if when they were younger, I would have loved to have had something like that. So, and we'll mention that app again in case people missed it uh, before we close out for sure. But when we come back from the break, I want to ask you, about a couple things. One is I understand you've shared your message in, in, in schools and in prisons even. I want to hear about that. And yes. then including parent events and churches and on. But the, well, the, the two places that really stood out to me was prisons and cruise ships. <laughs> I saw the parent <laughs> events in the churches and that seemed kind of standard. But that I'm really interested in hearing about. Yeah. And then um, ask you about what issues that you cover in your Hollywood Exposed show because I know that's, is that the name of what your what your program is when you go around? Is that the title of it, Hollywood Exposed? Yes, and we have four-part series. So if you want a half-a-day event, we can do that as well. And each of the hour sessions can be divided up. And so many people now are asking for a half a day because it's so hard to just do a 90-minute presentation on what's going on. Great. Okay, so we're going to close out to a break right now. When we come back, we're going to talk about that. Do you ever wonder what happened to courtship and find yourself longing to go out on a real date? Do you ask yourself why some marriages last and others fall apart? Is your marriage struggling despite your best efforts to keep it together? Women who win at love don't have a gift you don't have. What makes them unique is that they aren't at war with the men in their lives. Rather than take a competitive approach to relationships, as the culture teaches, they accept that men are men and that women are women. And that makes all the difference. Whether you're single and mapping out your life, or you're divorced or unhappily married, women who win at love will permanently alter the way you view men in marriage. You will learn the eight dating rules that lead to marriage, why super successful women struggle in love, what men want and what women want, hint, they're not the same, why love alone is not a reason to get married, how to avoid the green grass syndrome, and why acting like a man lands women in a ditch. Women Who Win at Love is an in-depth examination of modern dating and marriage and a wake-up call for women at every stage of life. So go to Amazon.com and type in Women Who Win at Love and get ready for your life to change. Welcome back to The Suzanne Venker Show. You can find out more at SuzanneVenker.com. We're talking today with Tina Marie Griffin, also known as Counterculture Mom, about the harmful effects of pop culture and what Americans can do to fight back against the Hollywood machine, or what I'm calling the Hollywood machine. Okay, so before we left for break, I asked you about where you go around with your um, message. Did you, if the... the um, program is called Hollywood Exposed and you I know you go into schools and churches but you also go into pr- into prisons and cruise ships and that really stuck out to me so tell me how you got started with that yeah well you know what I've just been all over the place for the last uh, 17 years now and so I'm like well that'll catch their attention I pretty much go all over the place because I don't want people to think oh she's just a school assembly speaker not in the least I've done parent events I've done leadership retreats I've done uh, bible camps for a full week I've I've done prisons. And so when I go into a prison and when a guy first asked me to come speak, he heard me at a music festival. I think it was opening for Colton Dixon, not Jeremy Camp. I did a couple bands. Um, and he was in the audience and he heard it. And he goes, this has to be, I want all my inmates to hear what you just said. I said, what? Come again, inmates as in prison? He goes, yes, let's let's break some new ground. I said, let's do it. Well, of course, it took half an hour to get into the prison because they had to tear apart all my tech gadgets to make sure I was you know, safe and kosher for getting in through the gates. But... I absolutely loved that event, um, that that opportunity, because I felt so bad for the people behind the bars. Many of them grew up in homes with violence and um, a single parent families or, or hardly the parents were gone working and hardly had a parent figures that taught them character. And they got mixed with the wrong crowd. There was a lot of teens in there that got mixed with the wrong crowd and believe the light the media was selling them as well. Oh, my gosh, Tina, the movies you just mentioned. I watched them with my friends. We thought it was so cool. We tried to go... Mm-hmm what we saw in the movies and there we had no clue what was going to happen to us now look we're behind bars so yes it's personal responsibility but with the lack of leadership a lack of uh parental involvement and total irresponsibility for our pop culture we have young adults and adults today regretting the bad decisions they made and they they are now either death sentence or behind prison bars for life if not 20 years so 
it gave me a great perspective coming from the people that were literally victims of what I was trying to help prevent. And they, I had great conversation after I got done speaking. A lot of them actually told me, because I was there for a couple hours after I spoke, they came up after me and said, Tina, I called my son, I called my daughter, I called my wife and said, hey, you know, I'm in prison, I'm not gonna be out for a couple of years, but this is what this gal said, and, and you know that my our kids are involved in XYZ, please, please guard their hearts and minds so they don't land up where I land up. So these inmates felt the urgency to make phone calls back home for their own kids. And that's, I mean, I don't want to start crying now, but that that's meant incredible. a ton to me. That's incredible. They got what I was saying. And um, they felt that they could give back in some small way through me to then go out and share with kids. Because I tell them, I've been in prisons and I've heard these inmate stories. You do not want to land up there. How did you originally get, because I understand you worked on shows like Young and the Restless, Days of Our Lives, Drake and Josh and even the Oscars. How did you get from doing that to doing this? Uh, gosh, it's kind of a, a couple things all at once, but the biggest door opener for me is I was in the industry for about a four-year period doing a ton of runway. Um, I did modeling. I did wedding dress shows. Um, I did a huge limited to Passion for Fashion show tour where I went around the country and set up in big malls like Mall of America and others where I did modest fashion clothing for girls going back to school. A lot of fun stuff like that. But um, I was I saw a flyer in my uh, hallway in Cal State Los Angeles where I was finishing up my film degree. I get a BA in film, film and television broadcasting. And it said, Miss America, you have to be under the age of, or you can't be turning 24 during the pageant. I was 23. I'm like, oh, man, this is my last shot of doing a pageant. Now, Suzanne, I'm going to tell you right now, I did not know how to walk in high heels, and I'm not joking. I stumbled around set, on set. <laughs> so, and I didn't like wearing a bikini at all. So luckily, Miss America back then had a one-piece. So I wore my one-piece suit. I was really health conscious. You know, I, I ate really well. Um, of course, if you work on set, they actually feed you pretty well on set. So a lot of my food was free. So I ate what I could get on set and I, you know, I was healthy and I had, um, I had a choice of what I wanted my platform to be. And so I chose lack of abstinence education in our schools, because at that time, working on movie sets, seeing the sex portrayed and witnessing the people on set and trying to change the wording of the movies when I was on there and when I was auditioning to then listening to a bunch of girls that I mentored at Oasis Christian Center in Hollywood Every Friday night, I'd help out with the teens. I also was a counselor there, you know, listened to. I don't want to say counselor, like I was full-fledged, went to school for it. But I was a great listener and uh, uh, and, and helped mentor several girls for uh, several years at Oasis Christian Center. And the combination of that, seeing what they were emulating, what they were trying to be like, who the role models were, which is a total facade, and me seeing what was going on behind the scenes and then doing the Miss America pageant, um, after that combination and I did the pageant, I had someone send me an email saying, I know you did the Miss America pageant. You're passionate about uh, absence education, lack thereof, and you're really involved with the youth, the teens. You've got to get connected with this guy, Phil Chalmers, out of Ohio. He's been speaking about violence and entertainment for years. He's starting a speaking team. You've got to be on it. He called me back about a week later. Tina, you're flying out to come to training. Can't wait to have you on the team. And so that opened the door for me. But I've been praying for nine months, Suzanne. So anyone tuning in saying, oh, was that quick and that fast? I've been praying for years. Well, don't give up. God will totally give you the open doors. My desire was to speak and warn other people, but I had no clue how to do that. God opened the door with this speaking team, and I jumped on the speaking team, and it was that quick. But I've been praying for nine months for an open door. Okay, i got to stop you right there, and we're going to come right back after a word from our sponsor. You're a man that respects quality over quantity. You value relationships that can stand the test of time. You enjoy convenience without sacrificing comfort. At Hair Saloon for Men, we get it. We are restoring the time-honored tradition of delivering a haircut experience men across all generations can depend on. Because sometimes the man everyone depends on needs a place of his own to depend on. The experience goes well beyond the haircut. With every perfect haircut service, you receive a complimentary beverage a relaxing shampoo, a hot towel and mint for the perfect finish, and remember to take advantage of the complimentary shoe shines. While today's world is filled with numerous clip joints and fancy salons, Hair Saloon is building something better, something different. Book appointments online 24-7, and walk-ins are always welcome. Hair Saloon, for men against the grain. Visit hairsaloon.com to find a saloon in your neighborhood or for franchising opportunities. That's hairsaloon.com.
Welcome back to the Suzanne Venker Show. You can find out more at SuzanneVenker.com. We're talking today with Tina Marie Griffin, also known as Counterculture Mom, about the harmful effects of pop culture and what Americans can do to fight back against the Hollywood machine. Um, you mentioned sex, or you were talking about absence education, so that's related to sex, I think. Um, and I've, I'm, a pers- <laughs> <laughs> I'm personally always, when it comes to Hollywood, honed in on the messages that are surrounding sex. Not just sex, but relationships. Sex and relationships, both. Because I think they do such a huge disservice um, yep. and cause actual harm to people's lives by not selling messages about sex and relationships that work for your life, but rather just destroy it. And you'll probably know about, I think we talked about this a couple weeks ago, this Miley Cyrus's new video called Mother's Daughter. And I wrote about that and um, for the Washington Examiner, and I told you about that, and I said, oh my gosh, we have to talk about this when you come on, because that was probably the worst I think I've seen in my, in my years. <laughs> What would what do you think? Um, I think you're right there. Now, if we gave out an award for the worst ever uh, <laughs> pop culture that's currently out there, I'd, I'd have four or five things that I would mention right up there next to Miley Cyrus. Okay. The sad thing is, it used to be one or two music videos, one or two TV shows out of 50 or 100, you know, throw a number out there. But now it's the opposite. Now I'm having a heart attack when I finally see something positive that can actually promote the parents. <laughs> Uh, that's positive. So we, we have to be on the alert, on the lookout. It is coming from every single angle. But yes, a new low for Miley Cyrus. And I have to say, I always see something that she pumps out thinking it can't get any worse and then it does. So um, people pray for Miley, but run from her. She's not a great role model at all. The sad thing is when I lived in L.A., she was on the red carpet at award shows that I would attend. Oh, she, well, what she was doing before was wonderful. It was so uplifting That that's cool. when she was younger. That song, that one song, Climb, I mean, that's that's a generic message for adults and kids that just it was wonderful. And she just it made me so sad. <laughs> she just went in the wrong direction. She did. And the bummer is you got, you know, Billy Ray Cyrus, I grew up, you know, learning his line dance and singing his music and was a huge fan of his when I was a kid. And at that time, it you know, was clean. But he even said, and I have a quote in my live show, The Hollywood Exposed Show, when I go around speaking, I have a lot of video footage that celebrities admit what they're doing is wrong. They are eye openers. I'm telling you, teens and parents' jaws are on the ground when they see my live show. It, it is an eye opener. So it's not just what I say, what I saw, who I met, what they told me, what, what I did, what I didn't do. It is Okay, this is what's going on. In fact, let me just have Billy Ray say it for himself. And I have killer videos that bring it all to life. Well, he had a quote that he basically said saying, pray for my family. The pressure and the satanic attack on my family is so huge. No one would ever understand it unless they're actually in film and TV living in Hollywood. You mean Um, so part of this Hollywood exposed show or I shouldn't call it a a program that you go around is about seeing the back end of what people can't see from the front. Is that Absolutely. Is that right? Absolutely. Yes, it's a backstage pass, and I love revealing this stuff because you can't deny the truth once you see it because it's all the dirt, the FBI research I put together that causes kids to say, I am sick of being deceived. They pull off posters off their wall. They're breaking apart CDs. They're, one girl erased 500 songs from her iPod the second she got done hearing me speak in Montana. Mm. And that's just three stories out of 5,000 I could give you right now. Another girl said her knife down on a school counselor's desk in Camden, Missouri, said, I'm done cutting. I'm, I don't need to do it any longer. One guy erased a bunch of graphic TV shows on his iPad while he was in my assembly at school. So these kids see it. And is it because they see that they're being lied to because of what you're showing them and they thought before that it was real? Or, or what? I, yes. A majority is. A lot of them are shocked. They, they come up to me. A lot of students come up to me afterwards and said, Tina, my mom's been telling me this for years. I thought she was, you know, totally out there and not telling me the truth or just wanted to protect me. And it's not that big of a deal. But the second you showed me that celeb actually telling me or sharing that they shelter their kids or they rewrite the lyrics for their own kids to listen to or the fact that they're actually promoting graphic sex and never saw it that way before. I don't want that for my own life. Thank you for sharing me that. And then some of them will even go back and tell their parents. Because when I do parent events after the school assembly, it's packed. And schools are like, we get maybe 10 to 15 parents that usually come out. We have no clue. I said, I'll tell you what it is. I give them a cliffhanger when I get done speaking during the day. And these kids go back home on fire. And their parents want to see exactly what they've been telling their kids for years. But the kids never listen. And they want to see it. Wow. <laughs> I'm kind of speechless here. Do, do Is there a specific place where you 
you have down where you're going to be, I guess, when you these events? It's something that people can find out whether or not you're going to be in their area? Absolutely. Well, there's a couple of things because, you know, parents can't be all over and I can't speak all over. So what I'm doing is if you want me to come to your school, church, whatever, God will make it happen. We'll find a way. It's totally possible. I've never said no. I've been all over the world in Africa, Japan. I, I have interpreters all over the place. It's totally I can go anywhere. I can go anywhere and share this message. If they go to counterculturemom.com, they can look at the speaker tab for booking and they can totally fill out an inquiry form and bring me. The other thing is the evidence that I was talking about with the cool video clips. I have a YouTube channel, Counterculture Mom. Now, subscribe to the channel, but I will warn you, many people have been telling me, people, that YouTube keeps on subscribing me from your channel. I love your goods. I keep subscribing again. Just want to get you a heads up. I'm getting so censored on social media. So subscribe yeah. to Counterculture Mom. You'll see a ton of different playlists that I put together for you guys. And a lot of the videos that I share in my live presentation are on that page. So you can sit down with your kids and see some of the dirt that I'm talking about right now. And then Counterculture Mom, the website, has a lot of blogs. Like one of my top shared blogs had thousands and thousands of hits. Facebook just erased my history of all my shares. I had 200,000 hits on one of my blogs about um, the seductive dance um, industry and, and going around for young girls. Like uh, the hip hop competitions and what they're required to wear and dance to is just horrendous. Why? Well, had a, uh, one go viral and Facebook erased all my history there, but the content's still there. Search for all this stuff. Look at the videos that I embed in my blogs and your kids will be mesmerized in a great way. In fact, a lot of the dirt from my show comes from kids and parents that text me saying, Tina, just saw this on Redbox, just saw this on Netflix, saw this magazine come in my, my mailbox. Please warn other parents. And that's the dirt that I then use to pump out through my Counterculture Mom app through my blog on Counterculture Mom and at my live presentations. But awesome. Just going to do a quick sponsor break. Hair Saloon. It's more than just a haircut. You walk in the door, tired, spent, looking a bit ragged. You're greeted by a warm welcome like you've been here before. A complimentary drink slides across the bar, quenching your thirst for comfort and convenience. The sound of clippers and conversation can be heard drowning out the noise of the world. You sit comfortably, surrounded in soft leather and smooth chrome. The smell of oak and clubman talc reconnects you to traditions your father and grandfather once knew. The soothing sounds of sharp metal trim away at your problems. Staying put in a comfortable barber chair, you lay back, resting your eyes as warm water and sweet mint soap washes away your worries. You recapture a few minutes to feel strong again, to look your best, and to get ready for what's next. And you're ready to repeat again a few weeks later. Hair Saloon, for men against the grain. Visit hairsaloon.com to find a location near you. That's hairsaloon.com. Welcome back to the Suzanne Venker Show. You can find out more at suzannevenker.com. We're talking today with Tina Marie Griffin, also known as Counterculture Mom, about the harmful effects of pop culture and what Americans can do to fight back against the Hollywood machine. And Tina, you were telling me about um, your your website and whatnot, and there's something I cut you off, I think. Oh, you're totally fine. The one thing I don't want to, for sure, I, I don't forget here, if everybody wants to get positive entertainment, there are thousands of options out there. The thing is, many secular media sources are not going to promote it because there's not any money to be made on it with when you don't promote sex and drugs and suicide and cutting and beheading. So because we don't want that in our home, a great thing you can get is my Counterculture Mom Guide. It's a pop culture purge. Um, it helps you weed out and go through your home and get rid of the junk. Uh, set a bonfire in the backyard if you want. Roast some marshmallows over the bad media. Have a blast. Send me some pictures so I can put it in my live show. But to get the good stuff to replace the bad, text the word GUIDE, G-U-I-D-E, to the number 444-999, and you will get a sweet parent media guide with thousands of entertainment options that are positive. You don't have to worry about it at all. Uh, there's a lot of freebie months, like trial months, that Pure Flix, Cross Flix, uh, movie guide a bunch of places gave me and said hey if they sign up for free for your link for a month we'll totally give them a you know a free trial for a, a month to check it out for their homes even a covenant eyes to block the porn so check it out get that guide text guide g-u-i-d-e to the number 444-999 and then i also have a really cool just released four cd series it basically was recorded live at a recent homeschool conference homeschool event and i am um i made it available for 40 bucks. Um, so instead of paying a couple hundred bucks to go hear me speak live at a, an event, I just recorded it live. I had some sound guys record it for me. It's excellent quality. 
You can get that on my store at counterculturemom.com. Either get the physical copy or a lot of people have been ordering it by downloading it. And that's, I think, 30 bucks to download it. You'll get it immediately on your computer to listen to iPhone, whatever. But um, I mean, Suzanne, we've got to do something. And I know that there's answers out there. And to guide our kids, we have not to freak parents out, but this is how bad it's gotten. Riverdale season three endorses baby sacrifice. And if you go to my counterculture mom app, you'll check out a recent alert that I put out. One of the top shows watched by our kids on Netflix is called Riverdale season three. Luke Perry, who just passed away from 90210 back in the day. He was the dad, the father that played on the show. This is one of the top watch shows and they literally promote baby sacrifice. That's where it's gotten today. Along with, um, we've got, this other show there's a facebook game encourages kids to masturbate it's absolutely unbelievable it's so sick and i talk about that it's called hand masters oh my god Uh -uh. a lot of of kids are doing that we've got group orgy uh scene in a popular tv show called sabrina i used to work on sabrina teenage witch when i was a um early 20s when i first went out there it was a comedy show so parents are thinking their kids can watch it today it's not it's a remake but it's filled with witchcraft and sorcery no joke and i blast out alerts to let parents know that that's the content that's currently in there so we have to stay ahead of the game and i love suzanne that you are passionate about the same thing helping our kids be the best possible adults they they can become because what they watch becomes what they think no question what they do no question well, this has been a great conversation, Tina. I, I, you've, I mean, it's just a wealth of information. I'm kind of stumped here just going, oh, my goodness. <laughs> there's, I'm sure there's much more. But it's been a pleasure, and I really appreciate your coming on and taking the time today. I know you're very, very busy, so thank you very much. Thank you so much. And if you want to do a pop culture alert every couple weeks, months, just let me know. I'll get on. Scare yeah. you a little bit, but then also leave them with hope and inspiration. So, awesome. Um, It was a pleasure. Excellent. Thank you, Tina. Really appreciate it. My guest today was Tina Griffin, also known as Counterculture Mom. You can find out more about Tina and her work at counterculturemom.com. And don't forget to download her new app by typing in Counterculture Mom. Well, that wraps up another edition of The Suzanne Benker Show. Don't forget to tune in next time when we talk with Erica Komisar, psychoanalyst and author of the book Being There, Why Prioritizing Motherhood in the First Three Years Matters. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast. And please do take one minute to give us your review. And if you have a comment or question, email Suzanne at the Suzanne Thanks for listening, everyone. Have a great weekend.